Hello, my beautiful babies. Today on the show, we're talking about the dark medieval fantasy series loved by millions of people around the world. Known for its graphic violence, explicit sex scenes, twisted political plots, epic betrayals, and huge flying beasts. Oh, hell yeah! It's hot D time! House of the Dragon! Oh, wait, no. I was talking about Berserk. Berserk? What the fuck is Berserk? You know what? You're about to make me and all our followers go berserk and unfollow this fucking channel! So you're gonna sit there, looking like a Targaryen queen, and trying to talk about some weeb shit instead of House of the Dragon. Is that right? Look, Berserk introduced a supremely ambitious platinum-haired conqueror who will stop at nothing to have their own kingdom way before Game of Thrones was on the scene. Please tell me you at least watched the show, Danica. Yeah, I watched it. And at first it was more of a hate watch thing, but then later I kind of got into it. But I feel like House of the Dragon is just okay. I wasn't blown away by it. What I am currently blown away by is Berserk. But the people are begging you to break Hot D down. Talk about the lore. Do like an epic history or something, anything. Fuck it, you're right. Let's talk about House of the Dragon. House of the Dragon is a prequel series taking place about 200 years before the events of Game of Thrones. It's based on George R.R. R. Martin's novella, The Princess and the Queen, which portrays the beginning of the end of the white-haired Valyrian rulers of Westeros. Season one of House of the Dragon shows the events leading up to the Targaryen Civil War of Secession known as the Dance of the Dragons. Round one, fight. And before you watched it, how did you feel about the show, Danica? I'm not gonna lie to you, I was really bummed out at first on watching this show. And it's entirely due to the fact that Game of Thrones fucked up their ending so bad and I still feel so betrayed by it that I have a hard time putting my faith in these showrunners that they're gonna lead me somewhere that's gonna be glorious in the end. And I felt like I was just getting back into a toxic relationship where I'm just gonna get burned, so. I'm consuming this media with a one foot in, one foot out mentality, and I'm keeping my expectations very low. And now, how do you feel about the show after seeing it? Well, for starters, I really can't stand that goofy ass MC Escher intro. It's nonsensical, it's totally ridiculous. Uh, it symbolizes the bloodlines? I know what it symbolizes. I'm just saying, it's a stupid, concept. Nobody knows what those little symbols on those weird little knobs means. And even if you did know, they're not on screen long enough if you can see what they are. If you need people to make YouTube videos to explain what your intro means, then guess what? Your concept isn't effective. The Game of Thrones intro was really excellent. It's one of the best intros I've seen. It was this beautiful map of the world showing you where all the different keeps are and the great houses who live in them. It was fun, it was educational, the animation was gorgeous, but this, ugh, it's a mess. And I also wish House of Dragon would get their own theme music instead of using Game of Thrones theme music to trigger a Pavlovian hype response from the audience. <laughs> oh, oh, maybe they learned that trick from you using your old theme music in your new show. Whatever. Another issue I'm having with this show is that there are too many fuckers with similar sounding names. We've got three Aegon Targaryens, two Viserys, we've got a Daemon, an Aemond, Rhaenys, Rhaenyra, Raina, Lena, Lainor. Oh, you sound like such an old person right now. Speaking of aging, the aging up of actors on this show is all over the place. 
I get that Viserys has leprosy or whatever, but he goes from being a middle-aged man to the fucking Crypt Keeper. Meanwhile, Kristen Cole does not age a goddamn day. How hard would it be to just give him a beard or throw some gray in his hair? At least with Damon, they gave him different wigs to denote the passing of time, even though that's still super lazy, like at least they tried. Uh-oh, here we go, all aboard the complain train. You're telling me it took two years to kill a crab guy with really bad psoriasis when they have two dragons. The costume has really fallen off. Damon's stupid dragon helmet is totally unforgivable. It looks like something from World of Warcraft's completely. And Lainor and Rhaenyra should have tried a lot harder to have kids. Is normalizing uncle, niece, incest morally responsible? Is this show going to encourage weird uncles to molest their nieces? These are the questions. And fuck Alicent. Even if Viserys did want his egg on the throne, which he didn't, it's too fucking late. Oh, there it is. Team Black confirmed. Danica is team black. I totally knew that you were gonna back the princess. Everyone knew it, we all saw it. Ugh, and Rainey's fucked up so hard. You're telling me that she has no problem killing hundreds of peasants, smushing them with her dragon, but then she's not gonna roast the traitors usurping the throne? She could have saved Westeros from a bloody civil war. She could have saved thousands of lives, but no, it wasn't her war to start. It's like, bitch, you wouldn't have been starting a war. You would have been ending one. You would have nipped it in the bud. It would have been done. And that's why I'm team green, D. You see, women have soft hearts and really shouldn't be in positions of power. We need a man on the Iron Throne. Oh yeah, because Viserys did such a great job. Don't get me wrong, I love Viserys. He is trying so hard to be a good man and do the right thing, but it's these very attributes that make him a bad king. And I love the irony of his moniker, Viserys the Peaceful. He was named Peaceful because his reign was prosperous, there were no major wars, everything was stable, but it is his blunders as a father and as a husband that lead to this bloody civil war where all the people he loves are gonna try to kill each other. I mean, what a sad, epic fail. So you could say he shouldn't have kept turning a blind eye to the political issues he created within his family. Good one, Brock. This series is definitely the most compelling character in the series for me. Patty Considine did a great job in the role. It is an A plus tragic character arc. And ugh, that scene where he's at the end and he gets his family all together and they're eating dinner and he gets to see them getting along for one moment before it all goes back to shit is so well done. Oh yeah, who's sad? He just loves his family a lot. They're all assholes. House of the Dragon certainly got better as the story progressed. And personally, I gravitate to stories that focus on characters and their interpersonal relationships. And that's what this is. It's a big old fucked up royal family drama. Is there anything that you'd like to add, Brock? Oh yeah, I loved it when we found out that Lord Laris, the clubfoot oily man, is actually a foot guy. <laughs> I laughed my ass off when he was jerking off to the queen's toes. What a freak. I meant, would you like to add anything about the series? Oh, uh, yeah. I loved the tension when we find out that King Viserys has no male heirs and we see that he's literally starting to fall apart. Yeah, and like as he's falling apart, so is his kingdom. Ah, oh, I loved that. Oh, oh no, I was gonna say, and then he has to choose which kid to fuck? His daughter's teen bestie or the child he's related to? Oh, what a choice. <laughs> Personally, I appreciate all of the birthing horror in this series. Like in that first episode where the baby is stuck and Viserys chooses to have the Meister cut the baby out without anesthesia and his wife's last moments are totally horrific and then the baby dies anyways. Oh, it was so visceral. And it's extremely fucked up 
that this is a real thing that actually happens. Game of Thrones was known for showing these really brutal depictions of the battlefield. And I really appreciate that House of the Dragon is going out of its way to show the battle of the birthing bed. Mad respect. Yeah, there's like three broads dealing with this gnarly childbirth shit. It's, it's disgusting. Personally, I hate it. These are women's issues. Okay, this should be done behind closed doors. We should never talk about it. You're telling me that you didn't think it was cool when Lena's baby got stuck and she chose death by dragon and set herself on fire? That was crazy. And then later when Rhaenyra got really stressed and she gave premature birth to a deformed dragon baby with an umbilical cord wrapped around its neck? Whoa. And speaking of people giving premature birth to deformed demon babies, let's talk about Berserk. Oh, fine. We can talk about that stupid Viking show now if you want, or whatever it is. Berserk isn't about Vikings, it's about Guts, a lone warrior who was born of a hanged corpse on a battlefield and raised as a mercenary who becomes a wandering swordsman until he meets his match in Griffith, the beautiful and charismatic leader of the Band of the Hawk who dreams of acquiring his own kingdom. With Guts as captain of the Raiders, the Band of the Hawk rises to the top through their conquests during Midland's Hundred Year War with the Tudor Empire until things go horribly wrong. Like how wrong? Ugh. Really, really wrong. You'll never guess how wrong. This series is part Mad Max, part Fist of the North Star, part Conan the Barbarian with heavy Hellraiser influences. There's also cute Star Wars references, definitely some Venom type business, plus nods to Brian De Palma's Phantom of the Paradise and Ken Russell's The Devils. There's even a dash of one of my personal favorites, The Rose of Versailles. Berserk started in 1989 in the pages of Monthly Animal House and has gone on to inspire a number of A-plus shows and video games, such as Attack on Titan, ReZero, Final Fantasy VII, Dark Souls, Bloodborne, and many, many more. It is one of the best-selling manga series of all time, and Dark Horse has been putting out these super sexy, oversized 7x10 deluxe editions with over 600 pages. It's so big. Ah. Oh, that's what she said. <laughs> uh, not from what I can see. Hey, 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 hey don't, don't zoom in on that. It's proportionate, all right? You've never seen it hard. I have volumes one through 11, and I'm really excited for volume 12, which is coming out December 27th, it's coming up soon. And volume 13 is currently scheduled to come out March of 2023. Jeez, how many fucking volumes are there gonna be? That's a great question. I wonder if volume 14 will just collect volumes 40 and 41 with Mira's final berserk, or if they're gonna wait to add the new stuff because each one of these volumes has three volumes inside it. Wait, what do you mean Mira's final volume of Berserk? Volume 41 is the last Berserk by Kentaro Mira, who sadly passed away in 2021. Wait a minute. You're trying to sell me on an unfinished story after you've been complaining about George R. R. Martin not working on Winds of Winter fast enough for you? Is that right? Is that what you're doing? This is what I'm worried about. Kentaro Mura died suddenly of a heart malfunction at 54. George R. R. Martin is 74. Oh my God, that's rude. Anyways, I thought you were little Miss Leave George alone. Look, creative work takes as long as it takes, and I get that. But it's not like he's been focusing on Winds of Winter. George keeps going on all these television side quests, and it's like, stop with the side quests, bro, and finish the main story. Writing a novel is hard, and you have to spend a lot of time alone in a room in front of a computer. It's not fun. And as a human, I get that George is getting fat paid to do a lot less work on these shows. He gets to hang out with people, meet actresses and actors, travel around the world, go to cool parties, go to award shows. He's made it, and that's fantastic. That's wonderful. But as an artist, I would feel bad if I left millions of people around the world hanging because I didn't finish 
my magnum opus before my time was up. Oh, it's kind of like how people want you to finish your Cyclops video and do part two. Oh yeah, okay. We're not talking about me. We're talking about George R. R. Martin. And if I were him and I were struggling, I would hire an underwriter to help me. And I would also make an outline and then prepare it to where if things went wrong, they could take over like Sanderson did for Robert Jordan with the Wheel of Time series. This has been done before. There's a precedent. So is Berserk getting an ending or what? Yes, Berserk is getting an ending. It is being continued by Koji Mori and Mira's assistants and apprentices at Studio Gaga. Sounds like a cash grab to me. Not even. Koji Mori and Kentaro Mira were friends growing up in high school and he's a fellow manga artist. Not only that, Mira was inspired by Mori and put some of his friend's personality traits into the main character of Guts, which makes him the perfect man for this job. Mori has stated that Mira once told him his vision for the series, including the ending, and he has vowed to tell it as faithfully as he can without expanding upon the plot in any way. I trust Studio Gaga and Koji Mori to get it done right. Look, D, I'm too broke to buy all these expensive ass volumes. I can't even read. And even if I did have the money and could read, I don't have the attention span. Well, if you can read and you can't pay, you can check out the entire series on readberserk.com for free. But if you can't read or you're not interested in reading, you can watch the Berserk anime series. Oh shit, there's an anime? That's what I'm talking about. Why would I fucking read if there's an anime? The best version is the Berserk anime from 1997 with 25 episodes. It mainly covers the Golden Age arc and it's coming to Netflix on December 1st. I'm so excited for a whole new generation to be traumatized by this show and read all of the terrible takes about it on the internet. What a treat. Then there is the 2012 Berserk movie series. It's also about the Golden Age arc. The animation is not very good. I wouldn't recommend it. It goes over the same stuff as the 97 series. And most recently, there's the 2016 Berserk series, which is on Crunchyroll. What the fuck is a Crunchyroll? Crunchyroll is an anime streaming service. <sighs> Anyways, this series has everything. Hell dimensions, demonic baddies, religious zealot torturers, bloodthirsty elf children, mystic Middle Eastern assassins, troll attacks, satanic orgies, cursed suits of armor, a lot of titties, and one of the hottest bromance turned eternal enemy arcs of all time. Oh, it's got troll attacks? Oh, hell yeah. Oh my God, they're raping all these village girls and then troll babies are bursting out of these girls' bodies. Holy shit, this comic is nuts. Oh, my berserk rules. Danica, why didn't you tell me about this earlier? Trigger warning. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, leave a comment below, and ring that bell. And keep an eye out for Danica's big announcement coming in early 2023. Jesus Christ, this girl's never happy, all right? What a contrarian. This show's fantastic. I mean, what else is there out there? Rings of power? <laughs> yeah, right, that shit sucks. I mean, there's fucking dragons in this flying around. They're setting people on fire. People are getting chopped up with swords and stabbed. People are fucking all over the place. There's all this crazy shit. There's fucking people getting their dicks chopped off. I mean, what is her fucking problem? This show is pretty good. And I just, I can't with it. I'm so done with her. She just needs to be happy with what she has.